Hi there, everyone. My name is Priyak Juthani. I'm a third year internal medicine resident at Stanford, and today I want to go over what it takes to match into internal medicine. This is important because the data were just released from the NRMP, and I go over the average step 2CK score. It often goes over some of the basic themes, and these themes can then help us understand how residents are standing out, what seems to work, and what is not working. Uh, before starting any video, you'll know that I've made several videos like this before, but this is going to be particularly relevant because internal medicine is by far and away the most popular match. And what I mean by that is it has the most number of applicants. It tends to not be the most competitive match because there are a lot of spots for internal medicine residents because internal medicine as a specialty is also a way that, ind um, that individuals can get into cardiology, pulmonology, uh, critical care in pulmonology. And because internal medicine then branches out into all of those subspecialties, it tends to have a lot more spots just beforehand for to accommodate that desire and just because of the fact that you often need pretty thorough training in internal medicine before doing that. That's currently what I'm doing. I'm in my third year. I'm hoping to do hospitalist medicine, so I'm obviously not going to do a fellowship, but just know that that's one of the reasons why so many people do internal medicine because it ends up being a uh, branch point to get into other specialties. There are three big PDFs that I will be using for today's video. Um, the reason why there are three PDFs is because each PDF goes over the match results for a specific type of population. So for example, there's a PDF that goes over US MD seniors. This is individuals who are in an MD school who are in matching into residency right after finishing medical school. I then go over DO seniors, again, DO schools, and then going into medical uh, residency after DO school. And then the last one is about IMGs, and that's where I got the data from the IMGs. Regardless, all of this is from the National Resident Matching Program, and so you know it's validated, and you also know it's based on the applicants who recently got in. With that being said, let's focus on what the match was like for internal medicine applicants. In 2023 uh, to 2024, there were 10,681 positions offered. What that means is that's how many slots there were. The total number of applicants who applied for those slots was 13,143. So you can just see that the overall match rate was 10,681 divided by 13,143. Already you can see that that match rate is much higher than the match rate for a very, very competitive specialty like neurosurgery that actually had a 58% match rate this last year. However, if you now break this down into those three populations I told you about, MD seniors, DO seniors, and IMGs, and within IMGs, I'm going to talk about the U.S. IMGs. This is individuals who are U.S. citizens who went to IMGs, and then non-U.S. IMGs, individuals who are not U.S. citizens who went to an international medical school. You can then see that this still varies quite a bit. For U.S. MD seniors, the match rate was essentially 90 percent, which means 3,692 applicants ended up matching. That's a very high match rate. For DO uh, seniors, the match rate was also similarly quite high as around 95 percent. 1,638 applicants ended up matching out, out of 1,729. For US IMGs and non-US IMGs, you can see that the match rate does drop off quite a bit. For US IMGs, this is US citizens who uh, uh, matched who went to an international medical school, 1,036 matched out of 1,681. And then similarly for non-US IMGs, 3,076 matched out of 5,737. I'm now going to really provide some of the stats. If you watch any of my videos before, this is how I do it. I'm going to break it down by U.S. seniors who matched, U.S. Uh, MD seniors who did not match. I'm going to make break it down by U.S. DO seniors who match, followed by U.S. DO seniors who did not match. Then I'm going to go to U.S. IMGs who match, followed by, by U.S. IMGs who did not match, and then similarly and so forth. Okay, so with that being said, the first thing I always start with is the average step 2 CK score. The general trend that I want you to pick up on, I want you to pick up on trends, not specific numbers. The general trend is individuals who match tend to have higher step 2 CK scores than individuals who did not match. And of the ones who ended up matching, it sounds like a 240 tends to be about a good score. Among USMD seniors who matched, the uh, score was a 251. Compared to USMD seniors who did not match, it was 234. Right, so 251 versus 234. Among US DO seniors who matched, 242, compared to US DO seniors who did not match, 220. And then similarly for IMGs, who um, US IMGs who matched, compared to US IMGs who did not match, 238 versus 226. And then for non US IMGs who matched, it was 248 versus 242. Okay, they don't report step one now because step one is pass fail. 
But now we can go into the next thing, which is the average number of research experiences. Again, this is an experience. It's not the number of publications. So if I was in a lab, that counts as one experience. If I was in a separate lab, that's another experience. So you can see that the trend I want you to pick up here is that there does not seem to be a correlation between the number of research experiences that someone has and whether or not they match. In fact, you can see here that DO seniors who were unmatched actually had more research experiences than DO seniors who matched. And similarly, it's true for USIMGs who were unmatched. So that's all. That's the only thing I want you to think about. You don't have to put down a bunch of experiences. I think the thing that's more meaningful is to see what you got out of those experiences. Here you can see the general trend is that People who end up matching tend to have more abstracts, publications, and posters than those who did not, but the number is not insane. It's just a little bit higher. So for example, for US seniors who matched, they ended up having um, you know, 8.7 publications and abstracts and posters compared to 6.2. Similarly, for non-US IMGs who matched, it was 7.0 versus 5.8. Obviously, this trend is not as crazy as some of the more competitive specialties. Like neurosurgery, I saw that there were individuals who had 30, 40, 50 publications, posters, and abstracts, but that's not the case here. But I do want you to know it is something that they think about. The next category is one that I find particularly interesting because I think it gets at this idea of prestige. Um, you'll see that US MD seniors who matched, about 32% of them came from top 40 medical schools, which means the top 40 medical schools with the most NIH funding. On the other hand, individuals who did not match who were from US MD schools, only 21.9% came from a top 40 medical school. That's not to say that coming from a great medical school gives you, like, you're automatically going to go in, but that is, like, a factor clearly. Um, DO schools, um, it did not include in this because many of the DO schools are not, they don't get much NIH funding because they don't do as much research, um, at least not NIH funded. Similarly for US IMGs and non US IMGs, they can't get NIH funding. The next, the next row is probably the most predictive of everything, and that's the fact that the more things you list on your rank list, the more likely you are to match, okay? If you don't list more than a few programs on your rank list, you probably will not match because, like, you can't even get <laughs> you know, if you don't get your first choice, your second choice might still be full, whereas if you have 13 choices, you will definitely match. And that's kind of the biggest thing I want you to take away here. USMD seniors who matched had 13 spots on their rank list. Compared to USDO seniors who matched, they had 12.5. For USMD seniors who did not match, they had 3.6 compared to 3.7 for USDO seniors who did not match. The same thing applies for IMGs. For US IMGs, those who matched had over nine places on their rank list, and those who are non-US IMGs had over six, right, compared to 2.1 and 2.5. And the only way you can have something on your rank list is if you get interviewed. So just remember that, that more interviews, I would definitely rank every place you get interviewed at because that exponentially increases the likelihood that you will match. And now, last but not least, well, uh, second to last but not least, uh, number and percent of AOA. AOA is an honor society. It tends to be more prominent in MD schools, and it's usually given to the top X percent of the class. It's kind of a way to stand out. And again, all you'll notice here is that people who tend to be in AOA, it makes it more likely that they'll match. However, you'll see that of the USMD seniors who matched, 85% were not in AOA. Similarly, it seems like you can be in AOA and still don't match, okay? 4.7% of MD seniors who were in AOA went unmatched. And now, that brings us to the bottom. And that's just the fact that a lot of people think that often getting an extra degree can help you with matching. That's not necessarily the case. Having an extra degree is nice, but it's not something that they often care much about, especially if you have an MD. The biggest thing they care about is that you're compassionate and care a lot about patients. So you'll see that here, you can kind of go through the data, but having another degree does not increase your chances of matching and does not correlate with it either. In fact, it often seems like it's often going in the other way where you're having people with extra degrees who are not matching. So I hope this video was helpful. I want the big takeaways are research matters, but don't go straight for numbers. Um, prestige also matters, but obviously you can match even if you don't go to like a prestigious medical school. Step 2 CK matters. It seems like a good score is anywhere between high 230s, um, low 240s, and that's a fantastic score. And then um, last but not least, the biggest predictor seems to be the number of places on your rank list. So more places you interview, more likely you are to have a match, especially if you have a longer rank list. So thank you all for watching. See you all in the next video. Peace.